what scientists just discovered at the Grand Canyon terrifies the whole world. I don't know about you, but the sheer existence of dinosaurs never ceases to intrigue me. The fact that the Grand Canyon has given birth to the idea of even more fascinating and unimaginable creatures having walked on the Earth's surface is quite fascinating. Imagine, like the dinosaurs, a long-forgotten person suddenly emerging in front of your eyes. There are many more secrets that the planet Earth conceals, and researchers continue to conduct treasure hunts with the globe in order to uncover them. The Grand Canyon was only very recently uncovered by experts as another marvel of history. So, Chicago, like many other contemporary cities, has a hidden gem. Miles of subterranean passages that enable commuters to go from one location to another without risking inclement weather. Los Angeles, Boston, New York, and Dallas all have their own subterranean tube networks, but a full metropolis has been uncovered beneath the Grand Canyon, which is said to belong to the giants. Do you believe it's possible? No wonder the Grand Canyon is one of the most significant landmarks in the United States and the world at large. Nicknamed the Basement of History, it's an embodiment of rock layers, with each rock dating back to a specific period since the Earth's formation. This natural wonder has always intrigued scientists and tourists alike with each visit. This place is home to thousands of years of history that explorers will never witness, some of which hikers and adventurers pass every day without realizing it. But what about history that has been deliberately concealed from us, not only hidden to safeguard historical monuments, but concealed because it'll overturn the history we've all been taught? Is that really possible? Here's where it gets interesting. As a result, the marks were photographed by a curious Krill visiting from Norway and emailed to his old friend and colleague Stephen Rowland. The Krill finds turned out to be ancient fossilized footprints, and Rowland proposed that the prints might have been 313 million years old, making the fossil trail the oldest vertebrate footprint ever discovered on the planet. A Mana Kacha formation is a massive sandstone formation that dates back approximately 314 million years. The old fossilized footprints developed when they got moist and were covered in sand. The sand played an important role in preserving the fossil imprints for millions of years. Scientists found two sets of tracks visible on the rock surface after observing these imprints. It was later pointed out that the imprints were as ancient as 330 million years. Interestingly enough, Roland also discovered two separate reptile species passing diagonally over the site when he dug more deeply into the footprint study. He also noted that one of the animals was about a foot long and used a lateral sequence walk in which an animal moves the left rear foot, then the left front, followed by the right rear front, and then the right front. Though scientists are still unsure whether the tracks came from two separate reptilian animals or the same animal on different occasions. This is due to the fact that the second batch of tracks was examined and found to be somewhat quicker than the first. The brilliant angel trail traces demonstrate the employment of lateral sequence gates extremely early in the history of vertebrate creatures, something scientists were unaware of prior to the discovery. Now, imagine this. An explorer called G.E. Kincaid accidentally discovered a vast underground castle while rafting on the Colorado River. According to him, the entrance to this strange cave was at the end of a 1,600-meter-long tunnel. Of course, Kincaid was taken aback by how inaccessible the cavern was underneath. The entry was around 450 meters below the canyon's sheer wall. The place was a government-protected zone and access was forbidden. The entrance to the cave was located above a shelf that couldn't be seen from the river. The architecture uncovered indicates that the underground city's architects were highly accomplished engineers. The subterranean city central access resembled a huge camera from which the radii of a wheel radiated, and the main chamber walls were ornamented with copper weaponry and tablets covered in Egyptian symbols and ancient letters. Sort of scary, isn't it? Are we talking about actual mummies? <laughs> That's right! The finding of mummified corpses inside the citadel was another remarkable discovery. The mummies recovered were all wrapped in black linen and were all shorter than 2.74 meters. Kincaid said he photographed one of them with a flashlight, but no photographs were discovered. Further study discovered surprising facts regarding the beliefs of the city's illegitimate giants. A tens of meters long cross-shaped plant and an idol that might have been the major deity of his religious system were more than 30 meters from the room's entrance. On the excursion, they uncovered a white camera. 
According to Kincaid, the mystery hieroglyphics that the Smithsonian Institute wants to unearth may be found on all of the urns, walls, entrances, and stone tablets discovered by the photograph. The carving on the tablet is most likely tied to the Southern Arizona people's religion. There have been discoveries of similar hieroglyphs. Only two animals are shown in the graphic writings, one prehistoric and one modern. The tomb, or crypt, where the mummies were discovered is one of the biggest, with walls sloped back at an inclination of around 35 degrees. On them, there are levels of mummies, each with its own hewn shell. Each of these blood-chilling tombs had a little seat in the middle with copper cups and shattered sword bits. The bottom level's urns and cups are primitive, but the urns on the top shelves are richer in design, suggesting a later era of civilization. It's worth noting that all of the mummies studied thus far have been male, implying that the outside area was the warrior's barracks. Although archaeologists have been pondering the type of civilization and people who once lived in that city, they've not been able to reach an answer regarding this story. It is worth noting, however, that the Hopi Indians have a tradition that their ancestors once lived in an underworld in the Grand Canyon until they were killed. Their chief Machito advised them to leave the underworld, but there was no way out, so the chief grew a tree and pierced the underworld's roof, and the people of one heart climbed out. They grew grain and corn along the Red River, which is Colorado, and sent a message to the Temple of the Sun requesting peace, goodwill, and rain for the people of one heart. That messenger never returned, but today at sundown in Hobby Villages, old men of the tribe grew grain and corn along the possessed by Red River, which is Colorado, along the possessed by Red One theory maintains that they originated in Asia, while another believes that they originated in the Upper Nile area. An Egyptologist here thought the Egyptians were of Indian origin. The Grand Canyon findings may give further information on human evolution and ancient times, although the report doesn't go into too much detail about them. We've all seen and experienced what it's like on Black Friday, when people run about doing anything they can to get a good bargain because they feel they have a chance to strike it big. Treasure hunting may be comparable since the tale came and went just as quickly. We hope the narrative is real, and if it is, the archaeologists must do something to find additional clues and proof so that we can all decide for ourselves.